Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Cladon Returns. This is Sengoku. I don't know why they lengthened the name. In Japan this is just called Cladon Sengoku. Why they had to add the returns and this is Sengoku on the end there, I don't know. But it annoys me just that little bit. Also there's a demo transfer so I assume there's going to be a demo out for this game at some point in the near future. But... I'm not going to be, I'm not going to predict the future because I'm often wrong. Well, let's just load up my save game right away. Is my save time any out? Yeah, there it is. Four hours, 15 minutes. I like to think that's fair enough considering what this game is and we'll get into what it is. We're going to have to do all our menu diving and stuff first. So we're just going to walk around town here for a little bit. This is Booger. Yes, I know. I am not a very creative person, but... We'll get to that. <laughs> there's um, there's a lot to show in the menu for this game, and I'm not really sure how to go about it. So I'm just going to wander around and check out things one by one, I guess. So, shopkeep, buy stuff. And you might notice that every little weapon here has four different slots on it. That's important, because there's a bunch of things going on with this game's slot system here. Kaboku, st we got stars, we got... Tridents, we got bows, we got all sorts of different weapons. They all they all attack in different ways and do different amounts of damage, of course, because this wouldn't be an RPG if they didn't. And of course, you can sell them here as well. You can also buy artifacts. And artifacts are useful for your magic circles. We'll get to what they are shortly. And we've also got wall stones. And wall stones are very important because they let you upgrade your castle. And as a matter of fact, I might buy one of these because God knows I need one of these. I'll buy one of these. And of course, you can sell items in bulk. Or just sell items in general, really. So if I wanted to sell my shields in bulk, I could do that. So I just sold three shields, and it gave me three gold for it. Which is absolutely fucking nothing in this game. But we'll get to that. We hit triangle, we can go to the menu. We won't do magic circles just yet. We've been to the shop, so let's go to the blacksmith. The blacksmith lets you trade in items... And enhance items. So let's say we wanted to enhance this Bokken. Well, we can't because we have no KO points on it, which kind of sucks. Weapons need KO points, and KO points are earned by killing stuff with them. So I believe my Copper Staff has some KO points on it. And we can put some of these things on it here by spending KO points. Some of these titles. And these, you can have up to four titles, and the Blacksmith only has the basic titles. So... He only has a few things like um, small resistances, extra run speed, stuff like that. If we head over onto this counter to the right, though, we can talk to the title, Owl, and this is how this works. We can give this Owl stuff with titles on it. Unfortunately, I think I've already given it all the stuff I have with titles on it. Okay, here's one. We can give him titles, and then, using our currently owned titles, and as you can see, I've given a few in here. They're listed from top to bottom as in their, what their power is. And if, you have, if you've given in enough of those titles, you can actually put it on a weapon. So, I can put attack plus one on this Muramasa because I've already traded in four of them. I'm not going to do that because I want to keep this Muramasa nice and clean for now. And you can also see explanations for everything that works out about as you expect. You have people standing around here, but they don't really have that much to say. The writing in this game is... Well, most of these aren't even relevant to the game. It's a bit odd, so there doesn't really seem to be any point to them. The castle is also interesting. We can talk to this guy. And this is where you put your castle wall stones. And these are basically just stat ups. Unfortunately for me, I've got a bunch of stat towns on these as well. Because I've been using low quality shit. But unfortunately I can't put this low quality stone in here. Because god damn it. I can put it in here? Oh no, I can't put it in here yet. Because there's, um, if the stones haven't gone far enough out. You can also renovate and repair stones to get rid of their downsides or um, to get rid of them or get rid of their downsides respectively. But I can't actually do that because I don't have 2,000 gold because that's ridiculous. You can also expand your wall, but I can't do that either. Do I actually have any junk stones lying around? No, I don't. That's unfortunate. But you can do that for stat boosts. Arena Owl. haven't actually unlocked the arena yet. That's a bit odd. And yep, she doesn't actually say anything. All right. Going on up here, we find... Actually, does, does this guy do anything? The Mugen. No. Alright. That's That'll be one of the Rangens. And you can also talk to this Owl. The, the, the damn Yowl. Oh, God. That's a pun. Owl. That one actually hurts. 
But yeah, you can talk to him and he will unlock stuff the more fame you get. And we will go and show you what gets fame right now because we can do that. It's literally right outside this door. So if you look in here, you can actually do quests. So as you can see, Tree of Life, uh, Slay Pines, Secretory Enemies at Archie Castle Ruins, Slay the Oniban, uh, just, these are all just enemy types. Then you can also come over a little bit more and there will also be, hmm, there are actually more uh, quests here, that's interesting. Yeah, there are also ones here like uh, collect a certain amount of money to get a certain amount of stuff back. Uh, you can also get things like, um, get, um, there it is, uh, get under a certain time on every level. This game is meant for stuff like speed running, which is a little odd. Not too odd, but a little odd. Uh, you come back there, you get gold, you get fame, and you get items. It's the most simple quest system you can imagine, basically. Now, the inn. The inn is interesting. Block your ears. No, the music composer did not just have a stroke. This is actually a piece of music I composed myself. So I'll I'll do you a little favor and just mute it for now. If you talk to one of the rocker owls, you can actually go in and edit songs. I'm not even joking. This is this, this is weird. So you can edit songs via putting in this MML, which is a uh, music language. These are all notes. You can change how long a note is by um, putting a number before or after it. You can see all the different things you can do with the songs here. You can even enter comments to remind you what some of this stuff does. Oh, hang on. I've, I'm putting the wrong things here. I'll just back it, back it up. And yeah, it's just, it's really odd. I, I did, I, like, hang on. I'm muted now. Hang on. There we go. Yep, just made some completely random music for no discernible reason. And now it's going to play in the background. Let me mute that again because I don't know how to shut that off. Oh no, actually I do. Hang on, there we go. Back to the default soundtrack. There we go. This is the multiplayer room. You can come here to do co-op and competitive gameplay with other players. But unfortunately, I'll show you. Ad hoc only. Yeah, I know, it kind of sucks, doesn't it? There are other things you can do in here, like, um, you can make the relationship chart, which is literally useless. Uh, even the game explains this to you, but let me, um, show you how this works. So you can change the relationship of some of these characters. So, I can make this lady someone I cooperate with, or I can make it someone who I dress. And you can even choose what the, um... Just, you can even choose what the relationships are. So say if I was to you know, make her relationship with me, I can make her a parent and child. This literally has nothing to do with anything. This does not help at all. This does absolutely nothing. All it does is make, make stuff like this. That's all it does. There's no stat boost or anything, so I don't know why it's here. It just seems a complete waste of time. I don't. You can even edit your character. Like, this... The, that's actually something you can do. Like, if you come to create here, there's there's the music editor, there's the relationship editor, and there's the pixel editor. And you can use the pixel editor to change... Yeah, also, I can't spell booger. You can use the pixel editor to change what your character looks like. So I can select a different color here. So yeah, there you go. Now, if I just hit start, do I save that? I can back it up. You can change a bunch of the data here. You can even do it for weapons. Unfortunately, I don't have... Oh, well, I do have a shield, but there's no added data for it. So, say if I was to make a new creation. A shield. I've never been one for creative names. So, I can edit what the shield looks like, too. So, uh, if I hold the old button, I can select my color. I can set it. I can select my color map. I'll make a... No, that's not how you do that. You have to select from the color map, set the color, then press X again. I don't even know what the hell I'm doing, but... This is, this is just a very, very quick example. There's not much I can do. So if I set my shield data now, I can set that to dicks.
And, well, I don't actually have that shield equipped, but if I go and equip it, it will say dicks. So, yes, I do not know why this is a thing. Hang on, so yeah. There's dicks. And there's the dick shield. I'm not going to keep that equipped, but we have to go finish our... That's not what I'm meant to go to. We have to go finish our tour first. The shrine is nothing special. Uh, these three hours up here will give you hints. The other hours are like different kinds of dungeons and just random talkies. The shady hour will let you buy some stuff that's quite hard to get otherwise. Nothing too much out of the ordinary there. The bathhouse, as far as I can tell, there's nothing in it. Same with the mansion, same with the empty house. So we're pretty much done with that. So that's the entire town. And now to show you what the deal is with everything. The magic circle. This is how you set up your character. The way characters in this game work, and just FYI, if you haven't gone this far and haven't been able to tell you, I haven't actually played Cladon before, so this is a, this is, whole thing is new to me. But, this is how you set up your characters in this game. You have a magic circle, and this magic circle, you put people on it, and then you put artifacts on all these people, and it will do things. It will give you extra SP, it will give you extra power, it will give you something in particular to help you out. So, for example, I put these guys here, and these guys all get mana boosts. And mana is the stuff that they need to make sure that they can hold on to all the artifacts in the game. So, for example, see how this guy here, Kojiro, only has 3 mana right now. If I remove this object here, he now has 13. You can only put as much stuff down as mana as they have available. So I've put down a bunch of stuff here to increase my SP. I also have a very special thing here called Widened. So if I put this here, for example, I can then put down a Widen here, and anything down the train, um, the chain, I should say, sorry, should have its effect doubled, but I, I don't really understand how this works because I've tried putting this before the chain and it just doesn't seem to work. The tutorial for this isn't really particularly great. Hang on, let me put, let me remove that, remove that, put widen here and put something down here instead. Like on um, this mana plus, for example. So if I put this mana plus here, this should double the effect for double the mana. So yeah, there's a little bit less mana on him now. And it's all, the, the whole game is this big, just clusterfuck of trying to figure out what magic circle works for you and what the best build is and what the best characters are for any particular area. So if I go to Blue, who's my current Lord, I can change his equipment so I can put uh, a different shield back on him. I'm going to put my, um, my favorite magic shield back on him. You can also change your armor and your weapon. And your weapons do have different attacks and all that. That's how that all works. You can also change your magical abilities. So... You can, as you can see, anything that's on Artifact 1 will have an effect on this spell. Anything that's on Artifact 2 will have an effect on this spell. And you can do that all the way down to Artifact 6. You can also change your Magic Circle, and you can, you can also save some. So as you can see, I have tons of different Magical Circles here. And they're different for every character as well. Every character has their own job, their own weapons, their own special abilities, their own stuff like that. We can also check the status of a particular character here, and these guys are all in their beginner circles because I haven't tried them yet, but this one isn't because I've been using her. Uh, as you, you can level up your characters and gain items, and it actually gives you a little bit of a bonus. Like, anyone who's a vassal, which isn't the lord, which is the guy in the middle, actually gets a stat boost. So, you can actually swap them out for different magical circles and all that. So, I'm going to save this magic circle so I can come back to it later. And I'm going to... Change my lore just to show you how a different magical circle works. So, we've got uh, we've got two guys here, and these guys both get experience bonuses, and so does this guy. This guy gets 50% extra defense, so you get defense from the front, because their positioning actually does affect where um, what happens when you take damage from that direction. And we'll get onto that, because it's a gameplay mechanic. And these guys also lose HP, but I get a little bit of extra attack, because I've put a, put a common... Well, I could put a common soldier on there. They've got the mana. But yeah, as you can see, if I just put some common soldiers on there, or that, that, whatever, just you get the idea. Certain things go down in certain places, and that's just how that all works. I can also put a growth artifact here. So, I have a bunch of growth artifacts, actually. So, I could put an experience up, I could put defense up. That's, that's how that all works. It's one massive giant grinding circle jerk, and it took me a while to figure that out, because 
This game, whoops, I do not want to be her. I want to be my mage. My mage is the only character I know that can get me through the dungeon level five. So, all right, load the magic circle I had previously. Oh, right, I have to um, change the Lord. Oh, still there, very good. I don't even have to load it, all right. The story in this game is basically nothing. I was going in expecting an actual story, sort of kind of like Final Fantasy, but no, that, that definitely isn't what it is. In fact, there has been no story in this game so far whatsoever. Basically, everything that I know about the story I found out about in the first minute or so. You're dead, you need to help Lost Souls find their way back. This is a lost soul. Let's talk to him and see what his problem is. The basic idea is the troubled souls don't remember how they die and they need to find out how they die before they can move on. And they're the ones who unlock the dungeons. And a dungeon was just unlocked. As you can see. That's basically how it's been for the last four chapters. <laughs> that's it. Like the last four and a half hours of game time, that's been the entire plot. That's all there is to it. So we're done with everything right now. There is a couple of other things that I need to go through, but um, well, actually there's just one other thing I need to go through. So I might as well go through it now. You come here to make friends. You can choose their gender, their name, but unfortunately their name is only like six characters wrong. Long, not wrong. So I, I just set his name to Rengoku-san. So if I, uh, you can choose jobs here. You can buy extra jobs from them. The owl, you can even set their dialogue patterns, but I don't even know. I don't even know what this has to do with anything. I think this might just be one of those NIS America style things. As you can see, his name's only going to be Rengok because the name limit is six characters, which is really short for a game that's kind of this open about its customization of everything, but... We'll deal with it. So, let's go to an actual dungeon. When we go to the dungeons... Oh, we got a cutscene, but that's probably got nothing to do with anything, so I'll just skip it. The writing in this game isn't fantastic. It's kind of that self-referential, self-aware, just kind of tongue-in-cheek humor, and it's not particularly over the top. Uh, you start with the regular chapters, and when you finish regular chapters, you unlock EX chapters, and EX chapters are completely different dungeons that will give you more XP. So, you know, if you want to go in there and um, grind some characters up, you can do that. You can also, um, you can also select your crappy music here. But I'm not going to do that because that's a really bad idea. Every chapter so far has had five dungeons. You finish one, you unlock the rest. So let's go and actually play a dungeon. Thankfully, this game's loading times are really freaking short, so we can just hop straight into it. Here we are. This is the mage character. I, I'll play a physical character when I um, once I've done a couple of dungeons, but I'm gonna want to keep my mage character around because this is the only character I have that can actually do shit. But the basic idea is you wander around like oh shit, ow! <laughs> you wander around like this. Oh god, that thing looks angry. That thing is angry. Oh shit, ow! And I just ow! Stop that! The idea is you walk around the dungeons like this, you fight off monsters, you take massive amounts of damage, and that's just how the whole game works. There are a few other mechanics as well that, I'm, that I haven't talked about, like this guy here, oh shit! This guy here has a door next to him, and doors require you to... There will be doors in the arena, and you have to kill basically anyone. You have to kill the bastards that have doors next to them in order to... Whoops. You have to kill the bastards with doors next to them in order to actually open the doors in the world. And then you go through the dungeon, find more stuff to kill, and you do that until you get to the end of the game. Or the dungeon, I should say. That's basically it. That's how every dungeon in this game works. Holy crap, that was close. So, that's the idea, basically. You just... You wander around... Oh god, not again. You wander around like this, you attack enemies, and you... Oh, fuck me. You attack enemies, you try and kill them, and you fail miserably, like I'm about to do, because... This is a really hard dungeon, holy shit! That kind of sucks. Um, so you can see what happens when you lose, you only get half the experience, and you lose everything you got in the dungeon. So, I'm gonna go play an EX stage next, because... I'm probably gonna be able to finish an EX stage, I'll guarantee you that. But again, really, it is the same basic concept all around. So, this is some, these are some really weak enemies, and I'm a mage, so I need to try and avoid getting hit. And I didn't do a very good job of that, because I didn't know what I was going up against in that stage. But yeah. 
EX stages give you more XP than the regular ones, and I do think the stages are completely new. Like, they say they're... They kind of imply that it's a similar sort of, um... They kind of imply that it's a similar sort of dungeon in comparison to the one that you would have played normally, but at the same time, I, I have a very hard time remembering dungeons like this, so they might just be brand new ones. I can't remember to save my life. But... There are more mechanics that I need to talk about. You do you do see the regular attack. The mage is the only one, or the, the bows might have it. I haven't tried the bows. But the mage has the thing going on here. Oh, Christ almighty. The mage has the little charge bar for his stuff there. The... Oops, avoid him. The mage has that. Uh, the regular melee attackers don't have charge times, but they do take a while to swing depending on their weapon, of course. So, that's just a thing that happens. And you do have special abilities that you can activate by default with the triangle button, and they cost MP. I'll use one on this guy here. That, that, was, a, that was a fire attack. And you collect mana by um, picking it up off dead enemies. You saw that little blue orb that it dropped. That's what it is. Some enemies are weak to certain elements, so if I fire a fire there, as you can see, that yellow number means he got healed. So, thankfully, my weapon is a neutral attack. So I can just go in there and just wipe the floor with that one guy. And now I can safely just stand here and spam spells because he'll die before he gets to fire his next shot off. And there you go. There are also um, green and black and white colors, which apparently are stronger monsters, but it's kind of hard to tell because of the way the monsters are designed in this game. It might just be me. I don't know. But, yeah. You do also have the ability to, to guard, it increases your defense, and your your shields do eventually wear away, like I'll demonstrate like this. By the way. That hurt a ton, holy shit. Um right. hello. Goodbye. It does increase your defense. You do also have the ability to run, which you've seen me do a little bit recently. This is the running, but as you can see up in the top right top left there it decreases your defense so you need to be careful with how much you run around i also just freed a lord soul and a lord soul in this game gives you basically another party member and the other party mem these party members are actually fairly strong so oh jesus i'll just set all them off and then walk out of the way so the arrows can go by in peace except they didn't for some reason all right whatever Oh, I must have actually killed an enemy with some of those arrows. I did! Look at that! I actually managed to kill an enemy with the traps. They can't set off the traps by themselves, but they can... They, they can be damaged by them. So, you know, there are a bunch of um, uses for traps if you are clever enough to use them. You do have chests. They'll give you different weapons. You can see that I've gotten some that have no titles on them and some that have titles on them. And that's your looting. You get weapons and items with titles and no titles. You sell off the ones with no titles. You uh, give the ones with titles to the thing and use that to power up your own equipment. And that's how the game works. That's the circle of life. That's the grind. That's how it all works. We'll play another one of those EX dungeons. Wrong, wrong thing. We'll play this one. And it just continues on like that, more or less. You continue on down the story. You try and... Um, get as many good items as possible you beat the shit out of everyone you can beat the shit out of that guy's that guy was strong to fire that's not good this is not, also not good you power up your characters via um you know grinding in the dungeons and all that you oh fuck me i'm not in a good spot right now well, you die so do you oh yay hp up for a, for a gross gross flight. You power them up and you can take them along as the Lord or the Vassal and this there is also differences like you can see in the top right that it changes the layout of the characters depending on what direction I'm facing and direction is also a mechanic in this game enemies take more damage from behind and less from in front and you suffer from the same stuff this guy can't be attacked from in front because he's one of those asshole enemy types so I need to get behind him and him like that there we go and these, your vassals also serve as your shield. It's an interesting concept for a game like this. So, 
your vassals will take damage and get knocked out. Thankfully, they don't actually suffer from an, e from an EXP penalty. Or at least if they do, I haven't seen it yet. And that's how that works. So you basically just use them as your living shields. And your magic circles will determine what you've got in the way of shields. And they will actually protect you from hits. So that's actually a good thing because... Um, in this game, you can you tend to get hit a lot, and that kind of works against you. So, I'll just fire this through to hit this guy so I don't have to get too close to him. Hitting switches as the mage is kind of annoying, because you, you tend to have to hit them twice, because you'll hit them with your spell, and then you'll hit them with your melee attack, and that kind of sucks. I... There is also things um, like line of sight... And there are other types of dungeons that we can go through, which I will be doing because I need to demonstrate how those work. Because it's, it would be like playing Disgaea without showing off the item world. But we'll get to that. But the actual basic dungeon crawling that they got going on here actually... It does work. It just... it I find it to be a little less engaging than your typical Disgaea game. Mainly due to the um, length of the dungeons. Mainly because it's all or nothing. I don't know if this changes later on in the game, but with this, you can choose to... Well, in the main dungeons, like the e EX dungeons and the regular story dungeons, you play through, like, one dungeon at a time, and it's basically nothing, right? I mean, like, there are dungeons that you can die on, but it's not a big deal if you do, because you can just try the dungeon again later. Then you've got the Ramgens, which we'll get to shortly, which basically reward you for continuing to go deeper and but if you die in them you lose everything because it works exactly the same way as regular dungeons do but they can go on forever like they can have up to 99 floors which is ridiculous so you can just you can tend to run into a lot of trouble if you're not careful you can just get absolutely destroyed I should probably head back the other way wait no actually hang on there was a red switch there so I need to go and find the red switch didn't hit that before. Alright, so now I can go back and go into the dungeon exit. And it's just, it just kind of feels like this all or nothing, because you can't exit from the Rangens at pretty much any time, but the annoying thing about it is that it's, again, it's random, so you never know what you're going to come up against next, and you might end up dying horribly to something, and end up losing everything. So, it tends to kind of feel like this all or nothing thing, where you go as deep as you can, and then you just get absolutely destroyed. Maybe it's just me, but... It just feels weird, and I'll explain what that's like right now, because it's probably about time we head into the Rangens. There are two different kinds of Rangens that I have unlocked right now, but there's more that I get later on. So, this is this is just a general idea of what happens in this game. So, we've got the Neogen and the Trigen. The Trigen is the less interesting of the two, because the tr way the Trigen works is that you, you start on the regular human side of things, and then you can go to Hell, but if you stay in Hell long enough, you might find a gate to Heaven, and... Hell and Heaven have better random title drop rates than the human world does, but you can't stay in Heaven very long, so you kind of need to uh, play it around the middle. Rangen, um, Neogens, I should say, are way more interesting. We'll, what, we'll show off how that works right now. So we start at level 1. Simple enough. And our attacks can basically just wipe the floor with everything, and yada 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 yada. The idea with these ones is that, as per the name suggests, they are procedurally generated. So you go on through them looking for gates, and gates are your way out to the next floor of the dungeon, and the dungeon goes up to 99 floors. However, the different kinds of gates you find can actually influence what's going on with the actual dungeons, and we will show that off once we actually get to one. Unfortunately, these gates, these dungeons are a little bit boring to start off with because you're just running around looking for the bloody exits. Because the exits are the only way to actually get any progress in these sorts of dungeons. So, there are at least somewhat decent XP farms. If you have some really weak characters, you can take them in with a strong vassal and just wipe the floor with them and get some great XP to start them off. Alright, we got three different kinds of gates already. That's a good start. So we got three gates here. We're missing a couple of them, mainly the good ones. But these are all um, problematic. But we'll start. We'll do the gamble one. These all. These all. Let me try again. These gates all do different things. They all have different rates at how they increase the monster level, the title level, the item drop level, just in general, 
and the um, level of the of the thing. So let's go to this gate. This is a level one gate, so I won't do too much. So we're rolling the dice, and unfortunately the gate's level has changed on us. So now it's gonna make things a little more interesting. But it's given us item drop rate of 20, rare title rate of 10. So that's not that's not bad to start out with, but now all our enemies are level five. And it continues on like this. You get no respite in between levels. And, I mean, you can find healing traps and luck traps to help get your health back. But they're pretty rare. So they're not something to rely on, especially in these dungeons. And I guess the problem with this dungeon is that, due to the way this dungeon works, it's entirely random how quickly you will find something challenging or find something good. Enemies also tend to drop items as well, so... You just end up wandering on through these, picking up items and hoping that you get something good before you get into a really hard level, because one of those three gates there, the really red one, was a very bad gate to get, because if you walk into that... Ooh, Angel Gate! If you walk into that gate, you will get absolutely destroyed. I walked into those one of those gates because I had absolutely no choice in the matter, and I ended up fighting enemies at level 1796. No, I'm not joking. I was level, like, 15 at the time. So, you end up getting in a really bad spot sometimes. Ooh, HP fully healed. Well, angel gates don't show up that often, so, you know, also that's also a thing. I, I say as I come across some healing traps. But yeah, these dungeons feel random as hell because you can come across some really, really strong shit just out of nowhere. It tends to screw you really badly, so you just need to be a bit careful of that. And there are different kinds of dungeons as well. It's just, I don't know what it is about this game, but I, I find the dungeon crawling... Ooh, that's a, that's a special gate there too. And by special, I mean that's a good gate. That's a gate I want. But, um... I find the dungeon crawling in this game to be a little less engaging than other dungeon crawls, and I honestly couldn't tell you why. The combat system is nice and simple. I will go and change um, to a physical weapon at the end of this dungeon, I promise. And we will go do something else. But I don't know what it is. It's just, it's basically just the wandering around for, oh dear. Okay, this one lets us walk floors, but we only got to walk two floors down, which is unfortunate because we're now on like floor five with... Yep, floor five with level nine monsters. So, decent for grinding XP, I guess. I don't know why I don't find this as engaging. Maybe it's probably because of the title system, because with equipment with certain titles, for the most part, the titles are going to be completely useless on the stuff that you find them on, for the most part, I would say. You can find some good loot, like this is how I found this shield, but this is probably the only good piece of loot that I've found in the entire game so far. The rest is just stuff with only like one title that's like low quality, so, oh this is a luck trap, I want to stand on that, because it actually, um, it actually heals a little. But, um, wow, I was thinking you might walk into, a, into that attack twice, but who knows. Um, it's just with the titles only being like one on a crappy piece of loot, you need to trade them in. And if you trade them in, you have to get like four of the same attribute in order to actually put it on a decent weapon. So, it's just kind of, it just kind of sucks in that regard. Just because you have to get four decent items or one really good item in order to actually get something to use that you might actually want. Fucking black... Um, oh god, that sounds racist. Uh, you just need to get lots of items of the same type in order to get something that you could really want, and that just kind of sucks. And that's why I don't find it as engaging. It still works. Oh god, another angel gate. Are you serious? Oh, but there's an actual exit gate there. I want to take that, because, again... With this game, luck can really screw you, so you just want to be really careful about how deep in you go. So I just want to try and take out this goddamn turtle. There we go. And I'll just run for the gate. 
So yeah, you can find just regular exits here as well, and that's how you get back, that's how you keep your money, that's how you get experience, that's how you level up, that's how you get new magic and abilities. Let's go swap to my shield character who uses an axe by default. And we'll go play an earlier EX dungeon. Actually, no. I'll go play something that I actually have a quest for. A slate, 20 peons, and cannon. Alright, I need to go to cannon next. So I'll go and change my magic circle. If I can actually hit the right option there. Change my magic circle to the one who I've already got set up who actually has a weapon already. So, okay. Everything seems in order, although that widen isn't in the right place. Everything seems in order. Uh, might as well put a growth here. Uh, I'll give her um, some extra defense. Sure, why not? And do I have a decent weapon? I need to check my equipment before I go into a before I go into another thing. Equipment, weapon. Uh, fuck it, it'll do. Let's go. Let's not waste too much time. So I'll go to cannon so I can do a quest and show you what happens in a quest. So you can see that the um, enemy there has that little um, devil mark on it. That's just what you do to... Um, that, that's just how you determine what a quest monster is. And this is how the um, melee combat and stuff works. We It's basically the same thing. There you go. You just you use SP to activate abilities. It's exactly the same as with the mage. And I just got hit by a slow trap and another slow trap. So now I'm moving really slowly. But thankfully my HP on these guys is really high. So I'm not going to have a problem. Yeah, I can actually get through these. You can't get through these on a mage, so... Kind of disappointing, actually. You can use this to find him and stuff. Like, um, I got a cheap bow. Because that's actually kind of lame. Right, let's take these guys out. The combat works fine. The... Looting is okay, just not as engaging as a game like Disgaea. And the... Whoop, avoid that. But I'm still having fun with it. You have to think of it as a Disgaea and not any other sort of RPG. You're here for the number crunching, and the number crunching is not bad. I just wish it was a little easier to get decent um, weapons and items and stuff, but... Other than that, it works fine. If you, uh, if you want a game where just number crunching and killing as many things as possible and going through randomly generated dungeons is your thing, well, this will work just fine. I'm enjoying it. I'd like to keep playing it. I don't have the fucking time, but it's it's still enjoyable. Presentation doesn't skip a beat. I'd bloody hope for it not to. Those are traps you can activate, but thankfully I'm a very strong person right now. Let's go find the way out. Kill some more things on the way. That's the way out, but I have a couple more things I can kill for the quest. I might as well do that while I'm here. And most of the... And the sound and all that, it's all fine too. Like, I, I got no problem with the soundtrack. I don't... I don't really care for it, but I don't have any problems with it. I'll let that slide. Considering this isn't a game where you're meant to really focus on the music or the graphics. Kind of neat that you can edit all, all the stuff about you guys and all that. But other than that, it's just, you know... That's not really what I'd be focusing on. I'd be focusing on the number crunching. Alright, let's go up here. I should have one of these quests done by now. There we go, that's one. And I got the reward, which was some gold and some fame. And I can just do that over and over again, and I will get more fame and more... More fame, more gold, more stuff to buy, more stats to enhance. That's the basic idea. I like to think I've given you a basic idea of what this is like, and it's pretty fun at what it does. So, I don't have a problem with it. Not really. It's just it's just a grind. That's that's really all it is. And if you if that's what you're looking for, this will do you just fine. If you've already like worn out Disgaea and Dragon's Crown and stuff like that, this will do perfectly fine. Actually, there is one more thing I can show off. There are boss fights. So I will go and um box. I will go and change my hero again. There we go. And I will go fight a boss. Mag no, not the magic circle. I want to go to the dungeons. Chapter 4. Actually, no, um. No, I should do chapter 4. Just just one more. One more. Make this video about around and even 45 minutes. Because these dungeons do take a while to get through. The the, when they say speedrun this shit in like. Oh no, no, actually, I remember. This is a pretty straightforward stage. 
Um, yeah, we just kill these two guys and that door up the top opens automatically, so it's not that big a deal. These guys used to be a massive pain in the ass to beat, but I've got a really good staff now, so I don't have to worry about that. Bye. Dead. Fun. Up we go. These are, these are bosses. Thankfully, these are not 1,700 level bosses. But these are indeed bosses. You fight the bosses exactly the same way that you do the... That you do the regular monsters. They're just stronger, have more attacks. You get the idea. It's not something I'd put on my top 10 games list of the year, but as a dungeon crawler, I, the, game, the game's name is literally Classic Dungeon. That's what Cladun is a uh, portmanteau for. Um, as a game like that, it works perfectly fine. If that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for just a dungeon crawl with lots of stats to fuck around with, lots of, um, lots of things to equip, lots of loot to find, and lots of customization to do, this will do you just fine. If that's what you're looking for, it's there. And it's still pretty enjoyable in the process. So, yeah. Ow, ow, ow. Right. Fucking, fucking fire traps. They get me every time. This is, this is why you don't run, kids. This is why you don't run through... Oh, shit. Right, I went the wrong direction. It's over to the left. More loots. Uh, yep, it's over to the left. Let's go to the left. Jumpy, jumpy, It's up here. No, no traps this time. Okay. Yeah. That, 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 that's basically it. It's a good dungeon crawler. Come in expecting nothing else, and you'll be fine. I might actually keep this around. This game isn't too big, actually. It's like 300 meg. Fits on most memory cards. So if you if you can't keep the disc guys or the dragon's crowns around because they're too big for your britches or your memory cards britches, well, this will do as well. Also, my head my head my head looks fucking weird. Just also, I only show that one time. I only show that downwards because I didn't do all the other sides. But there you go. You can actually, um, share all the stuff you create with your friends as well, but again, it's only on ad hoc. Kind of unfortunate. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.